During the logging boom in the US, many companies faced the problem of transporting timber from the woods to its intended destination. Many logging companies used sleds to move timber, but these were only viable in winter when the ground was much harder. Building a railroad was an option, but would have been a lot of work and expense for something that would have become useless once all surrounding trees were cut down. Steam tractors and off-road vehicles were an emerging technology, but were unreliable, couldn't transport nearly as much as a railway, and without a solid road, they'd most likely churn up the forest floor into a muddy mess, making it impossible to traverse. So what was the solution? Build a railroad, but out of logs. Most logging railroads naturally had a plentiful supply of logs that were unmarketable, and so rather than use metal rails, they'd simply lay these useless logs in a line parallel to each other. Then an engine, usually custom built, could easily run along these rails to and from its destination. Known as pole roads, these roads allowed logging companies to move much heavier loads much faster without the risk of getting bogged down, while at the same time being very low cost to build and maintain. The rails were dirt cheap to build, requiring nothing more than setting the logs on the ground an equal distance from each other and securing them in place, either with pegs or by building up a dirt foundation around them. If the line needed extending, a few more logs could be thrown down in no time. If the line needed to go in a different direction, just picking up and relaying the logs was a breeze. And then, once the company was done with the line, they could either easily pull up the logs or just leave them to rot. Locomotives were custom built to run on these makeshift rails, either in a specialist locomotive works, or more commonly, one would be slapped together on site. Unlike a regular railroad, the wheels of the rolling stock were concave as opposed to just flanged. This prevented them from slipping off of or between the logs. While this did make shunting or switching more difficult, most pole roads developed their own, albeit crude, ways of switching and shunting trains. These wheels also allowed the locomotives to climb steeper gradients and handle traversing the roughly laid rails, allowing the pole roads to be much more adaptable than regular railroads. They weren't without their drawbacks though. Most engines travelling on a pole road couldn't travel very fast due to the nature of their rails. On top of this, despite being able to climb steeper gradients than a regular railroad, many pole road locomotives struggled to climb uphill while carrying a heavy load, necessitating some trains to be split up to lighten the load and a very liberal amount of sand be spread over the rails to provide more traction. Despite this, pole roads were used for a surprisingly long time, right up until the end of the US logging boom. Sure, they weren't revolutionary or the next step in development for railroads, but as a temporary cobbled together solution, they more than exceeded in practicality. Nowadays, with much better off-road vehicles and a significantly smaller demand for lumber, pole roads are pretty much obsolete, but all the same, they remain as a testament to how far a little improvised engineering can go. Subscribe for more.